The banjo and the voice go together like peanut butter and chocolate. Today, I'm going to teach you how to blend them all together, and make something delicious on Banjo Quest. Before we get started today, I do want to mention t-shirts are for sale below to the general public with the new Jack of Diamonds custom artwork that I had done for Banjo Quest. Skulls, diamonds, banjos, a little Easter egg in the middle if you look really carefully. Get yours today. The proceeds go to support what I do here on YouTube. The other thing you can do if you like this content and want more of it is to join my Patreon campaign. There are literally hundreds of posts, tablature, downloads, a beautiful, wonderful supportive community that can help you get started. We're working on a color block system for chord theory that ties nicely to the Nashville number system. So if you want to really learn how to accompany songs that you've never heard before and use a cheat code to do it all in color and shape, to make it really easy to understand, hop on over to Patreon, it's all there. My tab, by the way, is totally beautiful. I gotta brag, my tab looks nice. Get some today on patreon.com. And lastly, if you don't wanna do any of those things or can't afford to do any of those things, I totally get it. If you really like this content and can't buy a t-shirt or can't support the Patreon campaign, your help is greatly appreciated just by subscribing to my YouTube channel. That is huge, leave a comment, all of that stuff really helps me grow the channel. All right, without further ado, let's get into singing and playing banjo at the same time. All right, so I've got a three-step process to help you guys get up and running for singing with the banjo. The first thing before we do the three-step process is we've gotta lay the groundwork. So you've gotta have some version, some easy to play version of the tune you wanna sing. In this case, we're playing Fall on My Knees. I tabbed out an easy version that supports the voice really well. You can get that tab over on Patreon. I will leave a link below. All right, so let's talk about this three-step process. It's fairly straightforward. The first step is to get your vocal pitches. The second step is to sing and play a simple version on the beat with your claw hammer part. Matching those pitches, getting those pitches every time. And then the third step is to detach the vocals from the downbeat. This third step is often overlooked. People get to the second step, they're like, oh, I'm singing with the banjo, all is well. But they'll often wonder, well, what makes my sound so square? Or why am I so sort of boxed into the beat or tied so closely to the banjo? And it's often because they haven't done the third step, which is to unhook those vocal parts from the downstrokes of the banjo. And we'll get to each one of these steps in turn. Let's go to step one. All right, first step, let's get our pitch. Pitch is all about resonating with a string. We're gonna play the notes that we're gonna sing. We're not gonna worry about time. And it's also all about holding vowels open. So taking a breath and, and really dwelling on the vowels. So let's do that. We're gonna sing the verse, fall on my knees. We're not gonna be in time. We're not gonna worry about playing the banjo just to get pitch on the strings and match the strings. So don't worry about playing the tune. So our first note is a C. It's an open second string. We're just gonna sing fall. Do it with me. Fall. Nice big open round sound. Support with the diaphragm. Don't make the noise with your face, but support it with your torso and your lungs. Take a deep breath. Fall. Project, project. I found that learning how to sing is uh, you have to have a willingness to look like a total fool when you do it. And I don't even care anymore at this point. I mean, the ship has already sailed. I played the banjo, so I, I, I'm not in that race at all. Fall on my... Our next note is, let's go to that F chord. Is that A? Fall on my knee. Support it. If you find that you are flat, if you're under the note that you wanna hit, one of the things I was taught to do uh, was to smile a little bit and that has this nice sort of, it lifts your note, it lifts your pitch just by a few cents, just the act of smiling. And it's a really cool tool to use if you find that you're under the pitch. The other thing that you can do is make sure your banjo is quiet enough for your voice to poke out so if your banjo's too loud and you're really slamming on it, you're gonna have a hard time hearing your own voice. So make sure the, the banjo's at a reasonable level, and you're holding those notes nice, 
loud and true. Sing out, sing with your whole body, and that will make it easier to get your pitch. All right, this second part is when we start to play in rhythm. We've got to enact a groove so we can get used to singing in time. This is how it's different from that first step. Don't proceed to this step if you're not comfortable hitting your pitches. Get the pitches down first and then work on the time. So here we go. We've got... That's our banjo part, nice and slow again. And we're gonna fit fall on my knees to that banjo part. So we're gonna do fall on my knees. Get used to holding knees, knees, as you arpeggiate the chord with this simple double thumbing pattern. So I'm in the chord of F and I arpeggiate. The cool thing about this is it's giving you your reference pitch, knees, and then it's giving you the harmony notes of the F chord so you can get practice holding your pitch while other things are going on underneath you. And I say underneath for a reason, it's because you wanna make sure the banjo is not too loud and drowning out your voice. So let's try this one more time. Fall on my knees. And we go on to the next part. Banjo part is. So now we've got that whole first part. Fall on my knees. Back in you, please. Good. Done, right? No, I wish it were that easy, but there is a final step to getting this to really work. If we were to just play it like that, it would be fine. It would be fun to play at a jam or something like that. It'd be easy and you'd be done in two steps. But if you really want to make your voice sort of come alive and float above the arrangement, we've got to begin to detach the vocals from the downbeat. Otherwise, all the things you're going to do on the instrument, they're going to sound very square if everything is oriented to the downstroke. And this is where I think singing with claw hammer banjo is a little bit tricky. This final step is difficult. Let me show you how to do it. Okay, so we're gonna establish a non-square rhythm for our vocals. So instead of saying, fall on my knees, we're going to give sort of a triplety feel to the beginning. So we're gonna think in terms of threes. Fall on my one, two, three. Those of you who have done boot camp with me, we did some cross rhythms where we were playing three over four. This is where that kind of training can pay off. So if you guys out there who have taken my boot camp, you may want to go back and look at that. That kind of cross rhythm training is really useful. We're going to be doing more of that this fall in the two boot camps I have lined up. So this kind of feel, one, two, three, one, two, can really, it can give your voice an anticipated feel. The banjo's anchoring the downbeat. And so between the voice, and the downbeat of the banjo, you've got what's called syncopation. You've got this push and pull of anticipated notes against the downbeat that makes for a very rich and interesting total sound. And that's what we're going for when we're singing with the banjo. We're, we're trying to make it more than the sum of its parts. And this is my way of starting to do that. So now we've got that triplety rhythm. Fall on my knees. Now we gotta play it. So you're gonna play it, you're gonna anchor that downbeat with your hands on the banjo. But you're going to sing, fall on my... Sounds like this, do it with me. Fall on my knees. Again. The next part of the verse would be Begging you please 
So let's get precise about this. We can use the fifth string, the fifth string or upstroke as a reference point to where to attach the on in fall on my knees. So for example, we could do fall on my knees. So on lines up with your upstroke and that can help you get that vocal off of the downstroke to really make it come alive. So that's a little trick I use to kind of give me a reference point for where my vocals need to come in. It sounds much more bluesy, it sounds more expressive, it just sounds more lyrical and natural when you begin to detach the vocals from your banjo parts. All right, so today we have learned a three-step process to sing with the banjo. Get your pitches outside of time, start to put that together with a simple banjo part and anchor yourself to the downbeat. And then the third step, probably the hardest, is to begin to detach the vocals from the downstroke so you can have access to the anticipated beats and create syncopation when you play and sing at the same time. Three big steps. So even though it feels finite and encapsulated in these three steps, this is not easy. This is a difficult thing, especially that third step. So take your time, get it right, record yourself, share it with others, and have fun. If you wanna find out more about how to sing with the banjo, if you wanna join me and the incredible Banjo Quest community, hop on over to Patreon. It's fun, there's a lot of content there. If you wanna get more into this, we're doing a ton of this, including chord theory and all sorts of stuff to give you deep access to the instrument. Check it below and I will see you next time on Banjo Quest.